Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to look at our potential number two receiver. And the reason I'm grinning when I say that because the guy that I'm about to break down a little bit is a UDFA. Had an outstanding game Thursday, and we're going to look at about four plays of his uh, performance and kind of talk about why he could potentially be the number two receiver. Roll the intro. <laughs> all right welcome back to the show if this is your first time here please do me a favor and hit that like button and if you like the content throughout this video uh consider subscribing so you can be here when i drop these videos throughout the season it's about to go down real hot and heavy because the preseason is started with the regular season right around the way but without further ado let's get into the shamar bridges film from thursday all right, and an X receiver, I ain't a receiver, but mainly an X, you want a guy that can win one-on-ones. And that's going to be the theme of this, this video, win your one-on-one -on -one matchups. So let's start off, you know, at the bottom down here. This is our guy. And this is not, the ball's not even thrown to him on this play. But just watch the smoothness and the transition of his routes. And then keep in mind he's 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, just watch how smooth, a lot of cats can't even run this route. But he ran it smooth. And then at the break point, well, this, let's, let's just get into it. At the bottom of the screen. Runs the slow go. Now, a lot of guys can't even run this. So initially, let me do slow mo. Right there, sticks that foot in the ground. Now, this, when, as hard as he sticks his foot in the ground and makes that cut, this DB has to honor that slant and push on it and try to close on it, which that happens right there. Now, this is where a lot of people can't do. He stuck the foot in the ground. Now he's going to, because most of the time when DBs get caught, they're taught to collision the receiver and just give up the flag rather than give up the ball. And sometimes the flag won't even be caught. But he ran this so hard and so good and so smooth and so fluid, the DB can't put a hand on him. So had Hutley had time to see it, he's beat. He's beat. And keep in mind, he's 6'5". Slow goes off for smaller guys that, you know, can, uh-uh, real good. This dude's 6'5". So that part right there is is promising to me. The fact that he can get in and out of breaks like this. Uh, uh. And again, at the QB had time, you're looking at a touchdown right there. A potential touchdown. Again. You want a guy that can win his individual matchups. You got trips up here to the top of your screen. He's down here one-on-one -on -one with this guy with really no safety help. And so um, let's see what he do versus this DB. No safety help. Hey, it's mano y mano. Win your individual matchups. The out route. First down. Keep in mind, let's set it up. Let's set it up. Let's go back a little bit further. Uh, right here. Third and five. You got a guy down there. Got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. They looking. They heavy to stop the run on this. Got all these people in the box right here. All these people in the box. You know, all these people kind of focusing on what's going to happen with the run. You got an individual matchup. You got to win your one-on-ones. Your -on so you run a little quick out. All you need is five yards. All you need is five. So you're probably going to run it out at about six and give him room to come back down the line. Speed out, no wasted movements. Stick out, ready to receive the ball. Ready to receive the ball. Timing. Now it's a little bit behind, but because he ran, his, he came off so hard and made that cut so precise. He there's no he didn't the DB still got space. It's too much space, too much separation. So now he wants to break on the ball, but it's too late. I rather I like to see more hands, but you know I'll take this. Because of the route. Because if he if he hands catches this and comes down, he can make that dude miss and then go score. But I like the route, though. I like the route. I like to, to, to get open and just make sure you get the first down. Again, we're talking win your individual matchup. That's what you want a good receiver to do. Uh, you got to cover one look, one, you know, covering that guy, 
him there, him there, him there. You got the um, free safety here is probably going to try to read the eyes of the quarterback and kind of make a play on the ball. Um, if the back goes out this way, this guy will take him. If the back goes out that way, that guy will take him. And whichever one doesn't have the back will probably kind of sit in the middle of the field and act as a whole player or a spy on the QB. So if the back flared out this way, this linebacker here will probably go with him and he kind of sit in the middle of the field as trying to spy the QB or just play that hole of uh, shallow crosses or anything like that. Fade ball. Touchdown. Now let's talk about it a little bit. Let's start from the jump. Alright. The release. Alright, the release not great. You really would love to get the DB to open his hips this direction so you can stick it and go there. But, you know, he did. Which is fine. Which is fine. Because you got other ways to win. Different receivers win different ways. And some people can win off the line. Some people can't. The guys that can't win off the line got to be able to win. Got to be able to finish. And I think he's a finisher. Now, the DB tries to put his hands on him because he didn't get a jam on him from the line. This is when he wins this route. Slaps that hand off. Now the DB's in oh shit mode. Just trying to get close to him. But it's really too late because look, the ball's here already. The ball's out. The ball's out already. Now he can start adjusting to it. He's just trying to stay with the with the, the receiver. And he can high point it, which he does. Look, that's perfect. Look at that extension. Look at that extension. Now my favorite part of this comes right he has the ball this is my favorite part turning his body shielding shielding the ball away from the defender because if you could just pose and try to be cute and leave it up there then the defender can stick his arm between yours and either rake your hands out when you drop the ball or just rake down on the ball and it comes out he shields him he shields himself well i'm sorry shields the ball from the defender and deadens the lower half of his body so he makes sure he get his feet in you need a guy that can do this. And and a little bit further into it, why you need a guy that can do this. And I think Baby can do this too. I'm not saying he's the only one on the team that can do it. But you, you do this a couple of times with him or Bateman. Now this guy can't sit in the middle of the field. He has to come over here. And now they have to take away from all this. Somebody has to come up there and play that side too. Now you have the box. So now it's a numbers game. So if you get, get guys that can win outside... They can't sit with, with a one high safety unless they got a lockdown corner. And if you don't have a lockdown corner, you now got to play too high because you got to protect the fade ball that's in this play. But you also got to protect it on this side too. Then you got your numbers in the box to run whatever you want. So having this guy that can do that, and I'm, I think Baby can do that, and maybe the other guys on the team can do it, but he just showed it Thursday that he can be a red zone guy. Let's go to the next one. All right, again, sticking with the theme of winning your individual matchups. This is another case of that. Let's let it play. This is the, the other uh, jump ball. And that's it at the bottom. Let's kind of, let's talk about it. Now, again, he's shown earlier in this game that he has the capacity to go up and get a ball even if he's not open. Like So, potentially, if he looks covered, he's still not covered, in so to speak, because of his... His, his height first, his ability to contort and go get balls and then just have a rapport with the quarterback and that the quarterback trusts you that if I throw you this 50-50 ball, you're either going to catch it or it's going to be incomplete. But let's talk about the play. All right, Brown going through his progression. Not open, not open, not open. Checkdowns covered, not open. So I could, I mean, he could either take off and run or take off and run that way, but he... Has trust in this guy. And I don't know if they, they've developed it in practice or because they, they probably getting reps together with him potentially being a second or third team guy. So they've probably gotten reps. So he probably does have a rapport with him. And he realizes that even though he's covered, he's not necessarily covered. So now he just, like again, covered, 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 covered. She, he covered. But he trusts him. Now watch the play on the ball. It's a little bit behind because right now the DB's in decent position, but he don't know where the ball at. It's a little bit behind, and the fact that it's a little bit behind, the DB is going to kind of get in front of him, and then Bridges can kind of slow down and position his body to go get it. 
Here's the ball coming. The DB kind of went right by. So now Bridge is going to go up to high point. He catches it and, torts, and contorts his body. Again, shielding the ball from the defender. Now, this, this act right here, you can try to work on it, try to duplicate it. All kind of, a coach will tell you he coached that up. That he, he lying. This is natural athletic ability. Either you can do this or you can't. There, the coach may try to bring it out you and put you know tell you you might have to do this in certain situations, but everybody can't do this. So if a coach is like he, I coached him up to do that, bullshit. Either you got this or you don't. And he got it. he he's able to be able to jump and turn his body and contort. But I do like the fact that he consciously, consciously, turns his body away from the defender to help protect that ball because again they can defenders are taught to either go through the arms and rake it down uh, or go through the arms and open your arms up so you have to drop the ball and then if the ball comes out it can ricochet off your foot your knee bounce back up it can be picked it can be anything but the thing is that he's catching it and turning his body away from the defender i love that part about him but that's that's the four plays that i want to talk about with shamar bridges and again, potentially he could be the number two guy, especially with with guys being hurt and not getting reps. But he could potentially be out of there too. But based if he continues to make plays like this and still do what he does in practice, I don't see how they're gonna keep him off. Because him and Pope, to me, were the best looking receivers out there next to likely. So it's it's gonna be tough. It's tough. I think it's tough on Tyler Wallace right now. I really do. I think it's tough on Tyler Wallace. I think Duvernay makes it, but these young guys, you know, I think Duvernay is technically behind Proche. So, but we'll see. And, you know, we hope we can kick, keep this up. Hope Bridge can keep this up because a guy with that could do those things against somebody else's number two or three cornerback would be pretty darn helpful for the entire offense. The, t- the entire offense. Because if he can do what he does against a number two or number three corner, he doesn't have to be open to do those type of things. You can't focus on Bateman. You can't stack the box. Like having a plethora of receivers, and they don't have to be great receivers. They just got to be good at certain things. Can open the entire offense up. But Greg has to know how to use them to to the best of the team's advantage. Use their abilities to the best of the team's advantage. But again, this is I ain't gonna keep going on about this. This is my two cents, four cents. This is my dollar on Jamar Bridges. And who could potentially be our number two receiver? Potentially. And I say that lightly. So don't say I said this. But I do want to send a shout out to Uncle Skip. Skip uh, has been preaching Shamar Bridges from the time he was picked up as a UDFA. He's been on it, on it, on it. So I don't want to take no credit for saying I knew about this dude. Because I didn't know much about him. I couldn't find much tape about him. But Skip loved him. And been preaching him and standing for him uh, from the jump. So shout out to Uncle Skip. And um, I'll see you guys soon. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me for about 10 or 15 minutes. Peace.